So hello friends. Uh, so I'll be doing a bit of a series of uh, little snippets or tidbits, maybe for one to two minutes, just on the key aspects which uh, as intensivists we need to know. So I was referring to this uh, 100 page document. So this is a 100 page document, 2025 American College of Cardiology's uh, guidelines for the management of patients with ACS. Uh, so today I'll be just talking maybe in next two minutes on only what is their recommendation for long-term antiplatelet treatment. Uh, so 2023 and 24, we got European Society of Guidelines for ACS. Uh, and I have made a video on that. You can please go and refer. So there are subtle differences like always and like expected between American College and European Society of Cardiology guidelines. Very subtle. So I'll just try to highlight that and it is good for every intensivist to know what is the recommendation for long-term antiplatelet because most of the patients who come to ICU will be on antiplatelets and we need to have a clarity what we need to do. So if you see the recommendations from 2025 guidelines, acute coronary syndrome, so it's a very nice sort of a diagram that's put. I've tried to modify a little bit. That's a default strategy right now. The recommendation is dual antiplatelet therapy for more than up, at least for one year, they need to be a dual antiplatelet. But it is not aspirin and clopidogrel, but it is now there is more emphasis on ticagrelor. So as you see, this aspirin with ticagrelor post percutaneous intervention, ticagrelor is more emphasized. And this I said in European guidelines also, P2Y12 inhibitors mostly are preferred now even as a continuation. So that is class one recommendation, strong recommendation as a default. So this is very easy. You give aspirin and then you give ticagrelor, continue for at least one year and then take a call. But the whole contention is in the other categories where there is certain bleeding risk that may be there and your intent is, is to reduce the bleeding. So the strategies to bleeding reduction strategies they call. So during these situations, elderly who have had an IC bleed or who have had a surgery, what are the choices? So if you see, the, you have to see the timelines here, one week, one month is listed here. The suggestion is dual antiplatelet therapy, aspirin with ticagrelor up to three months. So after three months, what the suggestion is, you can change to single. So if you look at European Society of Guidelines, they suggest up to six months, you can give dual antiplatelet. After six months, you can de-escalate to single antiplatelet, which is mainly P2Y12 inhibitor. So here, there is a more lineage or more alignment towards ticagrelor because they have quoted studies where ticagrelor is found to be more superior to even prasugrel and clopidogrel. So here, single antiplatelet is ticagrelor after three months. In European guidelines, it says up to six months. After six months, you can change to any of the P2Y12 inhibitors. So this is a, a very little subtle. So in American guidelines, there is more weightage given on ticagrelor. If you do not like this option, so the third option is if patient is on triple therapy. So there is very often patients who have atrial fibrillation, who are all oral anticoagulants and who are on dual antiplatelets. So the recommendation or suggestion from 2025 American guidelines is give dual antiplatelets, which is aspirin, ticagrelor, with oral anticoagulants up to one month. After one month, you can, you have to de-escalate to single antiplatelet therapy with oral anticoagulants. And here, single antiplatelet is not ticagrelor, it is clopidogrel monotherapy with oral anticoagulants. That also gets strong recommendation. So again, here there is a difference. If you look at the European guidelines, they suggest that if you are giving oral anticoagulants with antiplatelet therapy, so the de-escalation should be only to oral anticoagulants and they don't need antiplatelets. That is European Society of Cardiology guidelines suggest that you give oral anticoagulants and, and dual antiplatelet, but, but very quickly, very soon, uh, they have to be de-escalated to only anticoagulants, they don't need any antiplatelets. Here, the suggestion is you have to use clopidogrel with single antiplatelets in bleeding reduction strategies. Or the other option is if you are giving dual antiplatelet, aspirin plus ticagrelor or prasugrel for up to four weeks, you can continue. So this, if you see the class of recommendation for the orange one, they say you can give aspirin plus clopidogrel, which we are conventionally been using 
but that gets class 2b recommendation it's a moderate recommendation with a moderate level of evidence but class 1 is more of weighted on ticagrelor and if you are using oral anticoagulants it's oral anticoagulants with clopidogrel so if it is dual antiplatelets aspirin and ticagrelor where you can give only for 4 weeks after that the suggestion is you can give aspirin with clopidogrel which anyway we are all used to but that is down pedal the recommendation is come to moderate recommendation what about patients? The last category is where there is increased risk of bleeding, high risk of bleeding. Then there also the suggestion is up to one month you have to use aspirin with P2Y1 inhibitor. You can make a choice which one you want to use. After that, the suggestion is single antiplatelet. Here they say single antiplatelet is aspirin or P2Y1 inhibitor. If you look at European guidelines, the long-term continuation in most of the recommendations, they point to more of P2Y12 inhibitor as a long term, but this is a patients which are at a very high risk of bleeding, where giving anything is a risk, they are either aspirin or P2Y12 inhibitor. Again, moderate recommendation with moderate level of evidence. So, this is the sort of a 2025 recommendations. I thought it will be useful. So, little more emphasis on ticagrelor. And if there are an oral anticoagulants, the American guidelines still suggest that you have to give clopidogrel with oral anticoagulants. European guidelines suggest only oral anticoagulants. And uh, the aspirin with clopidogrel as a continuation phase tends to get little uh, lower recommendation uh, in American guidelines. So that's about it, folks. So I request you all to submit your valuable work to a journal of acute care. This is just a tidbit. So I'll present few of these such snippets and tidbits because you can visit my website to rehear to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.